Okay, it seems as we are uh, live. Um, I think we're live. So, uh, welcome friends out there in Facebook land. This is Lars from Photographit. And today we are going to talk about the new release of the Canon R5 and R6 cameras. And we're going to talk about what that camera would be like to take on the water. Of course, we can only be speculating as uh, since Canon only released this camera yesterday and so far there's no housing for it. But with me today I have uh, Nico Deutsch, which is a Canon expert, a Canon trainer and an avid Canon user. I think he has every single kit that Canon has released. And uh, he's here with us today because he's also a photographic ambassador. And he brought this nice toy, which is the uh, Canon uh, R5, R6 actually, the R5 is not out yet. He would hopefully have that later. And uh, with this in our hands, we're going to talk about uh, the possibilities to taking it underwater. So, hey Nico. Hey Lars. Yeah, there you are. Yes. Nico's here because we had this uh, summer party last night. He brought his girlfriend, Sarah, and uh, they're going to be traveling around Denmark for a while, uh, trying to do some of the beautiful dive sites we have here in Denmark, which are many. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Thank you for the invitation. Yeah, sure. Of course. No problem. Yeah. So you brought some tools or some yes, toys? Very exciting cameras. Yeah. yeah. Okay. First of all, you might want to tell me why is that so interesting? Why have we been waiting for this one? And why is this one so much better than the uh, previously 5D Mark IV, which a lot of uh, high-end <coughs> underwater photographers are using today? Yeah. Well, so it's not just this one. So there are two models, the R5 that you already mentioned and the R6, yeah. and they're very, they, they share some similarities and um, but in particularly both of them are very exciting and people have been waiting for it because it is the range of professional grade camera um, that you expected from Canon in a 5D uh, Mark 2, 3, 4 mm -hmm. and uh, this is now being put into the new R system mm. which is also a complete new um, way of approaching um, it is still an EOS system so everything is compatible but it is uh, the next step and it's a, there's no mirror in it right it's, exactly it's an, so it's, it's a mirrorless, a mirrorless uh, line uh, of full frame mm -hmm. um, cameras and but there's uh, already a line of full frame cameras the R models from from Canon exactly so yeah. they're yeah basically the R and the RP which are already out they were the ones to introduce everything the lenses got out and now Canon came out with these uh, two higher end models mm. which are also aimed at the uh, more professional users mm. and also those who use a 5D and that might be interested in uh, the advantages of the R system. Yeah. So the, obviously it's become uh, uh, mirrorless. I am a Sony user, for those of you who do not know that. I have the A7 Mark IV, and this is not going to be a live video about Sony versus Canon. Of course, we're going to do that over a beer tonight. <laughs> uh, but um, obviously there's going to be some similarity comparisons in the, in the live about these two systems. And uh, so it's a full frame system, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, the R system is full frame. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's something about these, uh, the, the, the lenses on them that, that might be interesting. Yeah. So, of course, with the new system, also there came a new lens mount, which is the RF mount. Yeah. And uh, which one was the previous? The, the previous was the F mount. So everyone who had the EF or EF lenses, mm -hmm. um, they, they should be familiar with the red dot and yeah, the bionet yeah. mount yeah. and the RF mount is basically um, work over over the RF so Canon uh, looked into what they can improve and what they can do better mm -hmm. and the advantage of taking the mirror out was you could get the lens elements closer to the sensor mm -hmm. so therefore they could also construct new type of uh, lenses especially in the wide angle uh, range yeah. and uh, getting these lenses further in with the keeping the same width or the same wide opening for the uh, diameter um, uh, yeah they they can could com completely come up with new lens constructions, which will be quite interesting to use underwater. And um, 
see what they can do. Also, what's uh, quite nice is uh, you have um, more control, so that you have more connections, mm -hmm. but you can also use, um, for example, the these rings, control rings. So there's an extra ring on the outside. There's an extra ring to control settings, wh yeah. which you can um, what set. What settings? You can set the ISO, the aperture, shutter speed, uh, think uh, exposure, exposure compensation on mm. these. Mm. So it gives you just an additional um, usage. Mm. Um, what we will get into is um, when you adapt it, uh, EF glass, w which we get to in a second, then uh, uh, you can use these control rings also on the water, which yeah. gives you an extra um, use of controlling your camera basically yeah okay as being a professional camera we want to be able to put our own settings into the system yeah basically yeah. okay so uh, this one compared to the other one the previous R model uh, again we are most interested in how this camera is to take underwater and um, we don't know that yet uh, but we know what the R model housing that is already out there looks like we don't have that housing here unfortunately but we do have an R camera. Yeah. So should we have a look at the two ones uh, next to each other? Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. We have it over here on the table. So let's have a look. So this is the existing one. And here we have the EOS R6. Yeah. And uh, what's, uh, what's to say is that the EOS R um, shares some similarities uh, like the R5. Yeah. Um, and this is the R6, but from the back, uh, they are both very similar um, to the uh, R5. Mm. But as we have these cameras right here, we could uh, give them a little comparison. And let's start with the top with the R6, I would say. Mm. And here you can see that uh, the R6 has a mode dial on top, yeah. which is in the R and R5 uh, implemented into the shoulder display top. Okay, so the R5, which is the top model, the, yeah. the, the low oh. number is the top model. Uh, the R5 is the top model, and that has the, um, this, the LCD screen on the top. Yes. Okay, so, so for that reason, there is, is the, maybe there's going to be two housings out? Mm, I, think, I think so, yeah. We yeah. don't know yet. We, we don't, don't know. know yet, just speculating. But there's a good chance that if there are two house, if they are to be making, if now to are to be making housings for these two, um, they would uh, have two. Ha they would need two houses because simply so different in the top. Yeah. Yes. And also, what I think um, will be interesting to see in terms of the housing is not just the mode dial, mm -hmm. which they have to address, but also what changed is uh, the touch bar on the EOS R mm -hmm. moved into a joystick. Yeah. So in terms of controls, uh, what the previous EOS R uh, housing had were the controls. Um, on the side here and now you have the joystick but also you gain another wheel so now you have three wheels control dials that you can address yeah so so you actually have three wheels on the camera yeah and additionally you theoretically have the control ring that's as well. that's right yeah. so normally we have a shutter speed and an, uh, yeah. and an uh, aperture uh, and then what um i so so for me personally, I like to have my aperture on the back wheel. Mm. Uh, here, I like to have my ISO speed, and mm. here oh. I have the um, shutter speed. That's because you're using your camera a lot for a video. Yes, right? yes, yes. So yes. that's why you'd like to have the flexible ISO. Yeah. As an auto water photographer, I'm pretty stable on ISO 100 and 200, yeah. so uh, that's not so, so important for me. I, I don't think it's necessary for to implement all three, but no. we'll have to see what uh, Nauticam. We'll, we'll do with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Interesting. Okay, so that was the back, and both of the LCD screens can be uh, taken out. They're uh, touch yeah. screens, right? Touch screens and yeah. flippable. Well, underwater, it's uh, not that necessary. <laughs> not so interesting. <laughs> but no? uh, yeah. Yeah. So, what lenses do we see here? Are these both R lenses? Yes. So, here we have two RF lenses, uh, mm. which are the native ones. Mm. But the cool thing about the R system is you can just adapt any previous lenses that you have in your um, in your bag that mm. are EF. Um, okay. And there are two adapters w which you can use. But these ones in particular, I think especially the 15 to 35, is an interesting lens to take uh, underwater. Yeah. And the 24 to 70, uh, you and I know what that is interesting for. We know that the uh, WACP2 uh, yes. has been catered for, for that. So if you decide to go for that lens for land use anyway, 
don't worry, there is certainly a great underwater solution. We'll come, we're going to come back to those Nautcam wet lenses. Yeah. Uh, but of course, 15 to 35, that's a nice lens. Yes, it's very nice, and especially because of the new way that the um, flange distance is shorter, um, mm. you can also get uh, the rear element really nice and close to the sensor, yeah. which allows new, um, new ways to design the lens and gives you super sharp edges yeah. Um, and just in, in general, really good image quality. Hmm. So um, these are the new lenses and looking at the Nauticam port chart, I think I remember there's about three or four lenses that they cater for already. Mm -hmm. But um, there's of course a whole range of EF lenses. Yes. So yeah. let me just find this one. That's the, uh, that's the uh, that, this is interesting for me because I'm a macro photographer. So that's a hundred millimeter. So that's what I'd be using now, yeah. the, because there's no uh, RF lens out for macro. That's right. So right now, if you want to shoot macro underwater, you probably already have an EF uh, 100 macro or 60, um, in this case, EFS, but mm. let's talk about full frame. So we're at the 100 mm. and um, you can just use it. And all you got to do is put on the adapter mm. from Canon. And um, there are three types and yeah. what Nauticam actually did, which is really nice, you can use the control ring. So the functions that you um, gain on the RF lenses, yeah. you could also ga gain with the um, RF adapter. So they actually move that there because Canon move that electronically down to the yeah. adapter. Yeah. So if you okay. want to use these extra controls, you could. Mm. And uh, to note that the with the adapter, you mm. don't have any loss in quality in terms of your image quality or AF speed. So yeah. it's like using, yeah, it is a native lens basically. Okay, so where you have need to put a, a, a meter bones on or something like that, no. you would. Uh, That's, yeah. There's also another uh, filter, um, which is. Uh, the adapter with a filter holder. The adapter with the filter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so this one you could theoretically drop in an ND filter, yeah. which is more interesting for videographers um, underwater. Yeah, what um, kind of filters would exist already for right this system? Right now, from Canon, you have one clear one, and then you have a variable ND, which is um, has the... Oh, I hope you can see it here. Let me see. Yeah. Yeah, you can dial it. And this one goes from F, uh, or not F, but uh, you have um, 1.5 to 9 stops. Of Interesting. ND, yeah. So ND as a neutral, neutral density, density filter, yeah. which yeah. is something videographers use. And can you tell me why they use this? Uh, yeah. So with the N ND, you can just get basically it's like a sunglasses for your camera. So you can get lower shutter speeds and get a nicer motion blur for your fish that yeah. swim Or by. you can open the aperture and get oh, Yeah, exactly. To keep the aperture open yeah. and not have to... Have so basically a more there. filmic look, something that is used in, in films often with a blurry background or yeah. like a blurry water, running water, stuff like that. Yeah. 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 Obviously not so, in so, well, interesting enough, but tricky to use for an underwater photographer. Um, but if you would like to have... Uh, I'm not that much of a video guy, but if you would like to have a blurry background, that could be, and, and you had too much. Yeah, or it's just uh, if you want to shoot at the right uh, aperture, like if you're in shallow water yeah. and you want to shoot at f8. Oh, and, yeah. um, to make sure you don't get a lot of uh, background light. Exactly, or yes. also the lenses tend to, you know, you get a more distortion the further you close down. So yeah. I, like, I like to keep it at, at f8 and that's, that's my favorite spot. Yeah. Which should be the most sharp place on the lens normally. Roughly, yeah. Yes, in the middle. So, uh, yeah, obviously I noticed that uh, Enon is making uh, neutral density filters for their flashes as well. Sometimes mm -hmm. if you do really ultralight macro, it can actually also be hard to get a flash glimpse that is small enough. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But I don't know. There's, it's, it's for me more theoretical to use these adapters and uh, it would only be used on uh, existing EF lenses anyway because you wouldn't mm. be using them on the RF lenses. Yeah, and the nice thing is you don't need anything extra. So basically if you already have a 5D Mark II and you think, okay, now it's maybe time to upgrade my yeah. underwater kit as well, then mm. um, you can just use your previous uh, lens 100 system. and uh, the same port. Um, also lens system, also wide lenses, angle. Uh, yeah, wide angle, 
um, and just continue using it. And I think that's the uh, that's the thing that is really great that you don't have to um, invest in new glass or uh, mm. yeah. Okay, let's go back and uh, see here. So we're back again here. Okay, so um, having talked about the lenses, um, some of the adapters and the controls, we've also talked about that, but we are interested in the underwater uh, lenses of the, of the Canon and what we can do underwater. And now we know that we can take the macro underwater. Um, but Nauticam, and we talk a lot about Nauticam, and the reason for that is we're both uh, avid Nauticam users, and uh, Nauticam is by far, I'm not trying to yeah, <laughs> disturb yeah, anyone, to, but it's, yeah. it's the leading uh, housing manufacturer here uh, presently on Earth. So uh, there's no doubt that these guys are making the most interesting housings for these systems. And uh, some years ago, they realized with the amount of cameras coming out, some of the things that could be lacking was proper quality lenses. So they decided to actually spend a whole lot of time uh, looking into underwater lenses that can be used uh, as wet lenses, just like we've known them for years. But the problem was probably the quality in the old days. Uh, now the quality is not that big of an issue anymore because some of the lenses that Nautikam have produced are makes an immaculate quality. Yeah. You're using the WACP? Yes. I use that on my Sony occasionally. Yeah. Uh, should we? I can. I have your housing down here. Yeah, we have a look at one of the. It, uh, I don't know. We decided that I was the one who was supposed to lift it because it's it's C two hundred, right? Yeah. Right now, that's the. Yeah. Oh, let's turn it around and. Oh. Uh, maybe you can see it here. Uh, <laughs> there you go. That lens out there is called the WACP wide angle correction port and uh, there's actually a mark two <laughs> it looks a little weird here <laughs> yeah. hi there um there's a mark two lens out now uh the funny thing about this lens is that it's been used with s absolutely standard lenses i mean i have one of the cheapest zoom lenses the 28 to 70 uh, and uh, sony lens uh, that i use with mine um and mine is even cheaper yeah yeah it is it's a canon what it's a, a kit lens, so it's a Super 35 sensor. So mm. therefore, I have you no know, the full frame lens behind there, mm. and it's a 18 to 55 kit lens that comes with any Rebel yeah. uh, or EOS uh, 500D, uh, 500, 600, whatever they are. Um, and yeah, that's the one that I'm using, and uh, the results are incredible. basically a lens that you would even consider not using at your aunt's birthday party <laughs> it's that's how poor these kit lenses are but because these lenses only are to be focusing on on one thing and that is getting the back side of this lens sharp the the big the hot work is being done by the lenses here and uh, that's why you get such a such a great quality um out of these lenses and they are very sharp on the edges right oh yes mm -hmm. yeah yeah, so even I, I, I really like to shoot, shoot open. Yep. So many times I have the aperture on, you know, uh, 3.54 and that's mm. all I need and get nice sharp edges and mm. I'm happy. Yeah. yeah. So, but I mean, your lens fits more like your big housing here. Uh, my, my camera housing is here. Uh, <laughs> Can we even see it here on oh, this that, small that, image? That's cute, Lars. Yeah, it's a cute little <laughs> one. Uh, it's a, it's a mirrorless as well, so it's not as big as the uh, yeah, but that, DSLR version. Honestly, th this is something that I'm looking forward to. Is yeah. um, I I've been traveling with this big housing, hmm. and it is a pain with yeah. uh, just the the weight. You always have to get extra luggage and everything. Yeah. So I'm really looking forward to having a smaller option for trips oh. where I know, okay, I don't need the C200. I can just use the R5 uh, mm. um, and have something nice and compact. So for oh. some people, they might think it's not nice and compact, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It is. That's right. Yeah. Um, but if you look at the DSLR for the 5D Mark IV, that's the size here. Uh, let's see if we can see it here. So... It's a little bit taller. It's definitely a lot thicker, uh, higher. Um, uh, overall, the, there's the same amount of buttons on it and it looks the same, same kind of port system, except this one has a smaller bayonet than mm. this one. But 
I, same handles. I, I guess it will also be a really good mix between these two. Yeah. I reckon, yeah. Like something in between if there. Maybe they're going to strike a housing that is close to the existing R model. And, yeah. and that is with an N20, N120 uh, port on it. Yeah. This one is uh, 100. Uh, so, um, yeah, and so let's, there is, this, there's an extra uh, wheel down here uh, on the housing, on the, on, the R, on the R housing that controls the adapter for that extra feature yeah. on the lenses. Yeah. Uh, all the new housings has HDMI 2 uh, outlet. So this, uh, it's an M24 port here. Uh, that could be M28 probably on that housing. Yeah, but I, I think they will do it as well because you do have the option to output 4K at 10 bit. Yeah. Uh, at 60 frames, so therefore I guess that we will see a similar HDMI port. So let's talk about that outlet and the yeah. HDMI because the camera is able to record. Yeah, so if we took, yeah, sorry, if, I, yeah. Uh, if we talk about video, that's where they are getting really interesting as well because me as a videographer as well, um, that's also something. Tell I'm me about the specs for. of the camera. Spec spec wise we have the r6 um with this uh with a 20 megapixel camera yeah. doesn't sound much mm -hmm. uh but it is very similar to the 1dx mark 3 and i i had seen now comparisons for example to the eos r or to the rp and mm -hmm. the quality and sharpness is on pair if not better mm -hmm. um so that's really nice so don't judge the camera by its megapixels. You gotta mm -hmm. see it for yourself. Um, so my sixty-one million pixels are. I'm good. Not, not saying that, uh, but uh, if you if you think twenty is not as good as twenty-four or uh, twenty-six, uh, this camera is uh, far sharper and better um, from the sensor than some twenty-four or twenty-six megapixel mm -hmm. sensors. Mm -hmm. But you gotta see it yourself to yeah. I mean yeah. the n numbers are there, but if you see it yourself, then mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, and uh, the R5, which we don't have here, um, is a 45 megapixel sensor. Yeah. And uh, if any, the design behind the R5 is also for uh, video quite interesting because you can use the full width, width of the sensor, mm -hmm. which, give, which gives you a 8K image. Yeah. So you can record 8K. So it's not HD, it's not 4K, no. it's 8K. Exactly. Yes. So that's it's a uh, crazy amount of data. Yeah. And it's not 8-bit. It's n you can shoot in 8-bit. You can also shoot in 10-bit, but yeah. you can also shoot in 12-bit raw, which is quite 12 -bit something. 12-bit raw, okay. 12-bit raw internally into such a small body, which is... So uh, how does it store it? Uh, it is using CF Express cards. So okay. it's a new so type. It's like which type so it's actually uh, saving the, all that data on the, on the camera. Yeah. That's and and that's where I want to go to because, mm -hmm. well, we, we saw the housing before and you saw that he was using a monitor and monitor is a completely different thing. We haven't talked about that yet. I'm using a monitor as well and I've used several different monitors. Um, to me, monitor is very important. I mean, I'm a still photographer and not ma that many still photographers used to do monitor or uh, mainly due to the price. But I mean, for a videographer, a monitor is something that is quite Mm. It's part of the bargain, isn't it? It, it is. It yeah, is. And, and, and the monitors, many of the monitors for videographers have been the, uh, the Atomos monitors. Mm. The Ninja models that has uh, both a monitor and a recording unit in the same unit. Which is nice to have, Yeah. but it's also an additional thing. Which is why there was this big N, M24, M28 hole. Uh, because there's a lot of data that needs to go out through the cable up into the recorder when you record a raw signal that big. But you're saying that the signal, well, the data can be stored uncompressed on the camera now. Exactly, because they are using super fast memory cards, mm. which are found in the cinema cameras from uh, yeah. Canon as well. And uh, they have uh, re writing speeds, uh, I think 1.7 gigabyte per second, not gigabit, gigabyte. Yeah. So, um, uh, it's so fast that it ha doesn't have a problem writing all this data onto the card. Yeah. yeah, that's that's quite interesting because too many videographers who have a camera with that much, um, with, with that 
high resolution and able to do that high bit rate and filming. They have a need to store the, 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 the footage they do. And usually when you save it to a smaller uh, card, uh, it has to be compressed and that's a, that's a quality loss. Mm. And that's why many videographers have used these uh, monitors with a recorder installed. Uh, but now you don't need that. No. Nope. No, you don't need that. But you still wouldn't mind to have the monitor, right? I, yes. That's also something we didn't talk about at the beginning uh, when we said we, are, we have a new system and our system, what the difference is to the DSLRs. Because now we're jumping back and forth a bit, but also in photography, the, the camera is always working from the image readout it gets. Mm. And therefore, what you output through HDMI is basically what the camera sees. Mm. So um, you're basically always in live view. And, and therefore, if you want to do some macro shots, you know, you get your camera into some, some holes and um, it's hard to see the monitor or you can't see the EVF, then a monitor is really handy. And I've had the situation quite often. And now with these cameras, Basically, the camera functions on the monitor as you would look through the viewfinder or the uh, back of the screen. Yeah. Mm. See, the problem with monitors is they're utterly expensive. Not the monitors are actually not that expensive, but the housings just, you know, they have to be watertight and the HDMI cable has to be properly produced in order not to break. So they have been quite pricey. But the new Atomos, I can't remember the name of it. Ninja 5? Nope. The, uh, it's a monitor, it's not a recording unit. Oh, that one, yeah. The yes. Mm, video, video assist. Yeah, what, whatever. No, no I don't video, that, that's black magic. Yeah. Uh, never mind. Somebody will look it up and write it in the comment line below. Um, that uh, is a very cheap monitor, actually. And now to can release, just release that they're going to come out in maybe August with a monitor for that. Meaning we're down to about 2,000 euro for a monitor system, five, uh, five inch. And to me, that is a no brainer because I have always, 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 always been using a uh, 45 degree viewfinder. To me, that's just the thing until I started to use a monitor. Then I never looked back. And uh, that's one of the things that I still, particularly it's been a problem with the A7 Mark IV you can use the viewfinders, but due to the the focal, um, mm -hmm. the distance from the uh, lens uh, glass and into the camera, the viewfinder is not working optimal. You cannot read the numbers in the bottom very well. So to me, uh, maybe viewfinder is a thing for the past, from the past, um. and monitors could be like the new thing. Yeah. I, for one, is hoping that people will do it because I have been lying many times on a pinnacle somewhere in the Red Sea and stuck in my camera in a hole and turned it up outside so that I got the the width and the blue, the big blue out there and just been shooting something out and all I had to do was turn the monitor and I could actually lie floating and just mm. taking pictures like this. It's yeah. something that for me is, is great value. I, I just uh, funny that you mentioned the optical viewfinder thing mm. I've been uh, diving two weeks ago and I didn't take my camera with me but uh, a friend of mine he took his 70d mm. and I've been shooting with him his housing and it was a um, uh, 45 degree angle EVF as well and I haven't used it in I think three four years and it was like oh my god oh, how, how, how can I get the picture again so mm. once you, I think you're used to the monitor yeah. it's really hard to Using a monitor enables you to actually lie away from the camera system and uh, you have a better view of what's going on and you can get a great overview even if you do macro. And as I said, I've been doing stills with the monitor for quite some years now. It's always been about whether the monitor was updated fast enough so that you can actually trust what you were looking at and making the exposure at the right time. But I think that it's, well, now that's not a problem. So a monitor is really something uh, also, you can easily yeah. turn it, look from upside down, yeah. sideways, anything. Yeah, that's. So that was a lot of talk about uh, <laughs> monitoring, uh, monitoring uh, file sizes and saving all that data. Uh, you're going to be using it as a videographer. Yeah, I think really I will use it as both. Mm. Um, 
I don't have a stills camera for underwater, mm -hmm. so this is the perfect combination. Yeah. And I think a lot of people will use it also for stills and for video. Yeah. Because the still features on this camera are really great, so are the video specs. And it's uh, the camera that I have been dreaming about in the last uh, few years. And uh, You mentioned something about that earlier. You said that... Uh, about couple my of dreams? Or? I don't want to hear about your dreams. <laughs> you said that if you were, a couple of years back, if you wanted to design a, a system yeah, that yeah, you yeah, yeah. could decide for yourself what it should look like. Yeah, so uh, exactly, let's repeat that, what I said there. Um, I, a few years back, I had these things in my head, what I, if I could design the camera, what, what would I like, what would I like to see, mm. and put all these features in, and, and now we kind of have this camera, and mm. now you're thinking, okay, what do I want in five or six years? And it's really hard because I don't know. I, I really yeah. don't know what else I want to put in this camera now. So this the is funny thing is with 8K is that it, people talk about it as if it's something that we use as an output media. It's not. People, no. people film no. in 8K yeah. so they can zoom around in the picture and take a 4K image out of whichever area they want to. That's why they use the 8K. Yeah. But as far as there's no, not that many televisions that has uh, that capacity and no TV signals really that will cater for that then it's not the output that's the problem right now yeah it's the same in 4k I film all my stuff usually in 4k but uh, the output is usually always 1080 most of the time yeah but now it 4k is getting more and more popular again um, and then you can just use the 8K as a crop-in feature, mm. as you did before with 4K to 1080. Mm. Now you can do it with 8K to 4K, yeah. um, or you could use it out as an out or still grab. You know, also for photographers, you could use it. Something we haven't talked about. Yeah, okay. because you get 35 megapixels. If you shoot, if you shoot film yeah. in uh, in 8K and you have an out raw output, yeah. you basically have a very very nice still image if you take it out and it's if the shutter yeah. speed is high enough and it's not blurry exactly you need to know what shutter speed to set it at so mm. um you don't have the video settings but then it's really cool if you you know shoot some macro you're waiting for some frogfish uh well there the just 30 like frames is uh, still fixed a light 8k yeah. video and just say okay frame number 7212 was the immaculate shot i'm such a good photographer <laughs> that's yeah, you in the future which uh, w which is quite interesting because i think with this camera it is even really easier now to get what you want which mm. uh, which obviously the manufacturers want uh, yeah. to do make it more easier to get the shots that you want and one of these things we also didn't mention before is because you use your screen now to focus you have so many options to go all the way to the edge in the auto mode it, it's the 100 percent coverage of the full sensor yeah. that you can use for autofocus or 88 percent if you manually put your af box somewhere so yeah. um and there's a lot of words that we, we have to run this one off and that was the last thing i was going to talk to you about that was the focus yeah the, yeah, yeah because that's certainly something that's been improved hasn't it yes yeah. um and now i you already said it. I already said it, yeah. um, but uh, sorry. Well, I have to say that with my Sony, I the the tracking functionalities uh, are just impressive. The amount of sharp shots I get doing macro is uh, I, there's two cameras there. That's why I'm all, all the time looking at the wrong one. Anyway, I uh, I get so many sharp shots now because some of the help features in the macro settings are so good, and. Um, that that's uh, that's also something that I, I was thinking that uh, yeah has been uh, considered and put in mm. and it uh, did not just uh, the thing is the uh, it is also capable of tracking animals mm. um, that was the which thing. works really good uh, mm. if you have uh, dogs birds and stuff what mm. we couldn't test is fish mm. so therefore uh, we will have to see how this all this tracking will work but you can manually select and track as well but the, yeah. also the automatic uh, tracking selection works really good and you see all the af boxes uh, following i it just don't believe in the fish part and yeah, i, I, I canon would have to make a special fish program for that 
I certainly have tried to find a way in Sony how to how to how to use the animal tracking with the uh, eye tracking for animals, and it's not working. But I don't need to because the other tracking functionalities yeah, yeah. are just so utterly, utterly, utterly good that I simply have so many sharp shots out of the many pictures that I do in a single dive. So, so I mean, I mean, maybe we're just nitty gritting right now, huh? I think so. But for for macro. I well, well, for macro, what I think is also interesting, the way it's more critical to get uh, sharp focus, um, is that the focus is on the image level now with the mirrorless. And previously, you had an extra AF sensor. So now what I found is with using the R system that I have way less out of focus uh, shots. And yeah. uh, I think that will be beneficial in the macro photography, underwater photography yeah, part. Okay, so I think that pretty much covered. We still don't know what the housing is going to look like, probably very close to the other great housings from now to Cam and the other R model that is already out there with the two uh, uh, zoom buttons dials, on the, on yeah, dials, on, dials. On, on the left. Uh, and, and the large output for the HDMI 2 and uh, the rather big hole uh, adapter mount for the, uh, for the new lens system that will cater for both the RF lenses and the adapter and then the EF lens. Uh, so with that in mind, we can probably look forward to, I think I need to make quite a few pre-bookings because just the last couple of days, a lot of people have contacted me yeah. saying that, uh, okay, can you reserve one for me? When can I get it? So I think you guys who've been waiting a long time yeah. um, are now close, closer than ever. I think so, yeah. Let's and, hope so. And I think we personally know so many people, or quite, we, we could, could get a lot of people together that are really interested in the housing for mm -hmm. the camera, so. Yeah, and then what? And then. Share one. Should, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I want my own one. <laughs> I'm not going to change to Canon. <clears throat> I'm still a vivid photographer with using Sony. Um, and luckily for that, that we are uh, uh, not alike in that sense, because yeah. I get to uh, hear a lot about Canon. And uh, it's been a very uh, good lesson for me to listen to your um, talks about the, uh, the Canon system. So um, thank you guys for, uh, for uh, hanging on. I don't know how many of you who actually made it to the end. It was a very long live. I'm happy that you were watching and please follow the Facebook group and be looking out for new lives in the near future. So uh, that's it for now. Have a great evening. Bye bye.